Today we're going to be making three drinks inspired by Irish coffees, but not necessarily purists Irish coffees. So we're going to be using Irish whiskey in one of them, but in the second two, we're going to be using actually a Scotch whiskey and then a rum. So they're all built around an Irish coffee template, but they're going to be different flavour profiles and kind of interesting ingredients to share in a drink. So the first is going to be inspired by my World Championship winning 2019 Irish coffee. That was the sticky toffee Irish coffee. And it just, as soon as I had the idea, I knew it was something I wanted to explore because sticky toffee pudding is amazing. Irish coffee is amazing. Their flavors kind of lend really well to each other, really rich and sweet and kind of brown sugary and intense. So I tried to combine the two to make one drink there. The second drink is gonna be a shorter version. So obviously an Irish coffee is quite a long drink. Some people don't want quite so much, especially after a meal. So this is gonna be a short coconut Irish coffee with some kind of tropical flavors going on, a little bit of spice in there as well. And then the third drink is gonna be a white chocolate orange cold Irish coffee. So again, really nice flavor combination, chocolate, orange, coffee, um, and it's gonna be really refreshing and cold for a hot summer's day, which actually we're starting to get now, so you can see the sun coming in a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's time to get on with it. So the Irish coffee dates way back before me, obviously, um, back to the 1940s. It was, supposedly invented by a bartender called Joe Sheridan at Foynes Air Base in Shannon in Ireland, uh, County Limerick. And this was very early days of flight, uh, transatlantic flights were taking place, and actually there was an engine failure on board one of the flights. So the plane was full of uh, American priests and journalists, and they landed at the airport, obviously a bit miffed. Um, in these days you didn't have spare engines and parts on hand, you had to wait for a new plane, which was kind of in short supply. So. The Americans got an unexpected stay on Ireland. They were cold because there was no heat on board these. Um, they were actually flying boats at the time. Um, so they were looking for something to kind of warm them up. So they went to the bar, Joe Sheridan, he presented them a drink and they said, what's this, is this Brazilian coffee? And he said, no, this is Irish coffee. And that's kind of when the story really started to take a little bit of pace. Um, it was made with Irish whiskey, brown sugar, just strong filter coffee and double cream floated on top. And one of the journalists on board was called Stan Delaplane. And he really was influential in the life of the Irish coffee and taking it from being a kind of small regional drink served in Ireland to something that was global and the phenomenon that it is today. So he took it all around the world. He wasn't necessarily asked about too much of his journalism to be repeated, but the Irish coffee he was constantly for the rest of his life asked to repeat and repeat and repeat. So. He was in uh, San Francisco, in the Buena Vista Cafe, and one of the bartenders, the owner actually said, you know, what's this crack about the Irish coffee? Tell me, tell me more. Uh, and he kind of shared the recipe. Buena Vista started making the drink, it became incredibly popular, and it spread all across America and then across the whole world. So that's when the Irish coffee really came to prominence, and since then, it's been twisted from, you know, different whiskies, different base spirits, even kind of liqueurs as the base, and the template of an Irish coffee is just amazing because you can apply so many different flavors and it doesn't have to be super heavy and kind of bittersweet like a traditional Irish coffee. It can be light and refreshing, which we're gonna explore today. So the kind of basis of the drink dates back way further than this um, to two drinks that I particularly found. So uh, Viennese coffee, obviously famous in Austrian coffee houses, which I think was in the, 19, uh, the 1700s. And I also found a drink called a Pharisee coffee, which again, these are both uh, spirit base coffee, sugar and cream, but not in the format of an Irish coffee. And the Pharisee coffee was really popular uh, in German churches, and actually the people in the church were known to drink these, even if they were at something like uh, a christening. But they'd actually use the cream to stop the aroma of the spirit coming off, so the priest wouldn't know that they were drinking. And when he found out, I think, uh, he basically called the people heathens, and this is where the name Pharisee coffee comes from, and that's the kind of translation for heathen, or so I understand. So, starting here, moving through Joe Sheridan, through Limerick, through San Francisco, and Stan Delaplane, we get here today. And then the Irish coffee is really popular, and it's actually a compulsory drink in the competition that I really, really love to compete in, which is coffee and good spirits. And actually when people say, oh, Irish coffee, you know, what can you do with that? you can do so much. So, a couple of variations we're gonna to do today. One is a little bit more traditional, which is the sticky toffee, and I'm gonna start with this now. 
Um, Irish whiskey is the foundation of the drink, and we're going to be using filter coffee. So, to brew the filter coffee, I like to have quite a strong filter coffee. Uh, this is going to be brewed at 83 grams per litre. So 83 grams of coffee per litre of water. This equates to 15 grams of coffee here to 180 grams of water, just dividing it down. Because obviously we don't want a litre of coffee. What we're doing actually this time, but we're not going to make that just now. So 15 grams of coffee, I'm going to start grinding. And this is going to be the sticky toffee Irish coffee. And this is going to be the foundation of the three drinks we're going to serve today. So, grinding size, you want it to be really quite coarse. You don't want a really fine, um, over-extracted filter coffee. You want actually some of the juiciness and freshness from the coffee to come through. I'm using just a really chocolatey Brazilian coffee here because we want that kind of chocolate butterscotch flavour to tie in with the sticky toffee notes. So now, 15 grams of coffee. Freshly ground if you can. And my preferred brew method is this, which is a clever dripper. So this is actually quite clever. So in here, the coffee and the water will sit, which is the kind of immersion part of the brew, like you get in a cafetiere where the coffee and the water sit together. And then as soon as you press this little button at the bottom, or put it on a cup, it will draw through and percolate, more like a V60 or a kind of kilometer wave brew method. So you get the cleanliness of the uh, paper filter, but you get the body of the immersion. So we're gonna use this. Scales, really important for making coffee so you can make good coffee consistently. Got our brown coffee here. Gonna add that straight in. And then with the water, this is 96 degrees, but basically just off the boil. So I'm gonna start pouring. And you wanna pour just enough to kind of cover that bed of coffee, just to make sure it's all wet, there's no dry patches, and you can give it a little stir as well. But to be honest, for this, you could happily use a cafetiere with the same recipe or any brew method you have at home. And add the rest of the water. So for example, if I were using a cafetiere, this, which is my strainer, and this will go to the top and you'll pour it out of the cafetiere. But we could use the clever dripper today just because it gives a little bit more clarity and a little bit more depth. I'm going to brew this for about a minute and a half and then drop it through. And then the recipe for the drink and all of the drinks we're going to serve today is going to be 25 mils of whiskey, 10 mils of some kind of liqueur to kind of add complexity or character, and then 15 mils of monin syrup. And we're using monin salted caramel syrup today, which really complements those sticky toffee notes. So when it comes to the Irish whiskey, you've got many options. This um, is actually a blend of Irish whiskies, but you can use Jameson's, you can use John Powers, which is quite traditional. Um, Whatever is your favourite, really. I like something quite vanilla forward. I'm just going to brew this into the cup. Get some joker on that. Give it a little stir. And as this pours through, I'll build the drink. So, there's a lot of debate. Should you heat the glass or not with an Irish coffee? And I think that just depends how hot you like your Irish coffees. I'm just going to add a little bit to the bottom. Just to take the edge off the temperature of the glass. Pull that away. And then we'll build the drink. So here's the Irish whiskies. We want 25 mils. Something quite vanilla forward and butterscotchy. We're going to use, for a kind of raisin character, you get a sticky toffee pudding, Pedro Jimenez. And this is a really sweet sherry that just tastes like liquid raisins. It's very delicious. So 10 mils of that. We're going to use 15 mils of Monin salted caramel syrup. And I actually like to add salt to a lot of my syrups because it gives, although it doesn't bring a saltiness to the drink, it brings balance. Just like when you're seasoning food, you don't want to taste salt and pepper, but you want to elevate the ingredients of that. And then we're going to use 15 ml of the lemon syrup. And before the coffee goes in, I just want to give this a little mix to make sure the syrup and the whiskey and the... Uh, and then it's just mixed together nicely. And I would suggest when you're shaking cream, this is a little pro tip, to count your shakes. And as much as it kind of is a strange thing to do, if you count how many times you shake it, you know if it's under whipped, you can shake it a bit more. If it's over whipped and kind of turns into butter, you can shake it a bit less. 
So again, I'll also weigh my cream. So this is the cream here. I just shake it in a flask like this one. You can add 100 grams, which is 100 mils roughly. And we're gonna do, it does sound a bit strange, 65 shakes, which I find just about right for this. But everything of cream is quite different, so you may find that you have to redo things or do it again, but that's fine. So in my head, I'm gonna again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but I won't do it out loud. Actually, that seems quite whipped, in fact. I'm gonna do another one. So this is the key thing, always have spare cream. So every cream is different, as I say, and that was actually whipped by like 25 shakes. So I'm gonna do 15 for now and see how we get on. That was 20. That was 30, and I can hear it's still liquid. Okay, so about 40. I think sometimes the top cream and the um, jug as well will kind of thicken, so you might find that. So I've got 40 here, I'm gonna have a quick look at it. Still quite liquid, actually you can see that in the camera. So still quite liquid. I'm gonna give it another kind of 10, 15 shakes. And you can imagine doing this in a world championship on stage in front of judges who are there literally to judge your skills and your cream and how it floats. It's quite a nerve wracking thing to do. So you don't wanna get this wrong. So one, two, three, four, five, and I think that's just about right now. Still a bit thin, I'm gonna go a couple more. So there is a bit of trial and error to this, but being very careful to make sure you get that right texture, because A, you don't want it to sink, and B, you don't want it to turn into butter. Okay, a couple more. We're probably up about 60 here, which does go to show how much it varies. But at least I know for next time. So that's all good. Add the coffee. You can actually feel as soon as the cream starts to thicken up or even when it starts to seize because it'll basically stop making the noise. So we're going to add our coffee and then I usually just use a spoon to try and help float the cream on top. And another thing you can do is use a little jug and strain the cream using a fine strainer. So you can see that. This just gives it a little bit more texture, a bit of a smoother texture rather, and avoids any little pockets. That's good. So now, the moment of truth. I'm gonna give it a little stir, and then float the cream on top. Theoretically, absolutely perfectly, but it never gets perfectly. Although, that time and care invested in the cream does really pay off because it's an easy way to ruin a great drink by getting the cream wrong. But no, that looks pretty good. So, this is the Sticky Toffee Irish Coffee using Irish whiskey, Pedro Jimenez, salted caramel and modern syrup, strong coffee, and a bit of cream. Cheers. And the key. Does it give you a milk moustache? Yes, it does. <laughs> mm. Very much a fan of that. And that's a really kind of luxurious, rich, dessert-style drink. So, sticky toffee Irish coffee, really good. Really kind of familiar, really flavours that we really understand and know. But then you can take it somewhere completely different. So, the second drink we're gonna to serve today is a shorter Irish coffee. And this is gonna be a short coconut Irish coffee. So this that we tried earlier, the Sticky Toffee Irish Coffee. A classic Irish coffee is quite a long drink. I think that's about 280 ml. But this one's gonna be much shorter. So this is gonna be just a short capsule based uh, coconut Irish coffee. So the base of the drink is gonna be again whiskey, but this time we're not using Irish whiskey, which I know is a controversial statement, but there's so much uh, diversity and flavor in whiskey It'd be a shame not to explore the, explore the flavours of different parts of the world and different regions. So, 
In terms of the coffee, we're going to be using capsules, so I'm going to brew this first. This is actually a Rwandan coffee. Um, quite jammy, quite sweet, a little bit of cherry in there, with a little kind of hint of uh, tropical fruit, but nothing too much, and a little bit of kind of lemongrass as well. So with the capsule machine, I always like to purge through one shot first, just to clear out any old coffee. And then we're going to be using Balvenie, Caribbean cask whiskey, or any kind of tropical rum barrel aged whiskey. We're going to be using Velvet for lemon, which brings a kind of citrus and a little bit of spice. Then we're going to be using Monin coconut syrup. And the template of the drink, the actual proportions of the drink, are just going to be the same as earlier. 25 ml of our spirit, 10 ml of our liqueur, 15 ml of our Monin coconut syrup. And that's cool. So, just got rid of the old water from the previous coffee. I'm going to brew my capsules. I'm actually going to add two capsules to the drink because I like to have a little bit more coffee in there and there's only sort of five or six grams of coffee in each capsule. So that's just going to brew it. And I really like to explore kind of different flavours in Irish coffees. So I made a similar drink to this in the World Championships in Brazil in 2018 which had kind of Caribbean flavours. The coffee was almost tasted like um, pineapple and toasted coconuts. It was really, really good. This one works really, really nicely as well. A little bit lighter, a little bit more delicate. And while this brews, I'm going to start building the drink. So, again, just going to add a little bit of water to my cup, just to warm it through. I don't like my Irish coffees to be super, super hot, so I think uh, just a little bit in the bottom is a nice amount. We're going to add our kind of tropical whiskey. Again, 25 mils. Going to add 10 mils. Velvet for lemon, which is a rum based liqueur, kind of citrusy, kind of spicy, also quite sweet. And this is kind of the unsung hero of a lot of tiki drinks. And then 10 mils of that, and then 15 mils of our coconut morning syrup.
Cheers and enjoy. Mm, so good. So now we've done the sticky toffee Irish coffee. We've done the short coconut Irish coffee. And now I'm gonna do something quite different. So the third drink we're gonna serve is a cold Irish coffee, which is quite interesting. Uh, and also it has a real nice um, chocolate orange flavor profile. So I'm using the Monin white chocolate syrup. And then the other ingredients in the drink again, we're gonna use 25 ml of spirit, 10 ml of a liqueur, 15 ml of syrup. And this time I'm going for a white rum from Diplomatico Planets, um, which is kind of green banana-y, really refreshing, really kind of uh, delicate but complex flavor profile. I'm using Cointreau for that kind of orange flavor, and then I'm using the white chocolate syrup from Monin to bring the white chocolate. And coffee-wise, I'm gonna be making flash brew. So we're gonna be using hot water, brewed at the same 83 grams per litre, but rather than using entirely hot water, I'm gonna be using less hot water and substituting the rest out with ice. So for clarity, 15 grams of coffee, 120 mils or grams of hot water, and 60 grams of ice. And because we're gonna be adding a bit less water than we traditionally would, I'm just gonna grind a little bit finer. So probably one notch finer, allow those settings to go through. And I'm gonna bring the kettle up to 96 degrees again. So for this, because we're gonna be stirring, we're gonna be needing a spoon, so I'm just gonna grab that. And then again, I'm gonna be using the clever dripper. So again, any brew method which you particularly like will work for this. So grind a little bit finer. I'm using the same coffee again for this, the Brazilian coffee, because again it has that kind of chocolatey flavour which we're really looking for. Pop that in. And then we're going to add 120 mils of our water, but to be prepared, I've got 60 grams of ice in this carafe. And this is just going to immediately kind of flash chill the coffee, which is exactly what we want for our flash brew. So let's add the water. Again, just enough to kind of cover the bed of coffee to make sure it's all immersed. This is called the balloon, if you're trying to be fancy. I'm going to add our water to the rest. Just 120 this time, remember. And I'm going to leave that for around about one minute as I build the rest of the drink. So this time we're going to be serving a cold drink, so the drink, the glass is in the freezer. I'm going to add, first of all, Again, 25 mils Diplomatico Planus. Any white rum will work really nicely for this. Diplomatico just has that kind of nice white chocolate note. Going to be adding 10 mils of Cointreau or any kind of triple sec or orange liqueur. Then 15 mils of the Monin white chocolate syrup, which has kind of got the creamy texture without any sort of cream in there which I really like. I find when you use white chocolate, the kind of cream liqueurs, it can split quite easily with other ingredients. So this works really nicely. Brings the creaminess without the kind of dairy, lactic taste. 15 mils. The coffee's just been in there now. So I'm gonna start to brew this. Draw it through, I should say, into our chilled vessel. A little stir. And straight away you can hear the ice in the carafe start to crack. It's really cooling down quickly. And we want actually all of the ice in the carafe to have melted before we put it over the drink. So this is going to have a little stir, it's going to give a little swell once the coffee draws through. And in here we're going to be adding the coffee and then the cream. So as that draws through, we're going to start preparing the cream once again. And give this a good shake you do find your cream needs to e be even more accurate and set just how it needs to be because you're floating it on a cold drink, which seems to be even more uh, challenging. So I'm gonna give this a good shake. You know, it's still very loose. Still the same. So that's 60 shakes. I 
that's just starting to thicken up now. Yeah, that's looking really good, just a couple more. Just should get that right. Pop that into our jug. Again, straighten it through if you can. And then in that time the coffee's finished brewing. So we'll pop that down. And you can see there, the ice is almost entirely melted already. So we're just gonna swirl this around to get that last bit through. I don't want to over dilute the drink, so we're actually, we're gonna serve it with ice, rather than any more kind of water or um, coffee. So I'm gonna add this in. It's just about early tiny rocks there. Pop this in. I just wanna add a couple of cubes of ice just to get it right where it should be. And now we're going to float the cream on top, theoretically. So let's see. So I've got the cream nicely whipped, strained through so there's no bubbles. The sense of relief when this floats, you don't even understand. When you've done this in front of people, you'll realise that such a simple thing is actually quite difficult to do when you're kind of uh, unsure if it's actually going to flow. Uh, so, in that we've got white rum, 25 mils, 10 mils of Cointreau, 15 mils of uh, white chocolate monin syrup, and then we've got the double cream on top, and I'm just going to finish with a little twist of orange, just to kind of give that nice aroma. And this is a cold Irish coffee, which is something quite interesting and not often done. So we get those orange oils on the drink. And it's a super refreshing summer twist on the Irish coffee. So cold, chocolate, orange, Irish coffee. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's so refreshing. Probably gonna drink that now. I'm not driving today, so I can't do it. So there we've got three different variations on the Irish coffee. I'm conscious I've still got milk and stuff. We've got the sticky toffee Irish coffee, which is a bit more traditional in its kind of length and proportions. We've got the short coconut Irish coffee, and we've got the cold, chilled, chocolate orange Irish coffee. So really simple uh, template to work from. 25 ml of spirit, 10 ml of liqueur, 15 ml of monin syrup. Top it up with coffee and a little bit of cream. Add a garnish if you fancy. And you've got a really nice foundation to build lots of different Irish coffee inspired drinks. So please stay in touch. Make sure you try some Irish coffees, maybe the cold ones in summer, and keep the warm ones for later. And I hope you have a good day, stay safe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again.